Keegan Swenson, the Heber Express. He's got five minutes on Peter Stetna and then a zip code to the rest of the group. This is Keegan's race. He takes this seriously. This is his hometown and he wants it. So here we are coming into a uh, four stop of the Lifetime Grand Prix. One of the biggest and the baddest, probably one of the hardest. And uh, pretty exciting to have the Grand Prix coming back here to Leadville for the second year in a row. <laughs> I mean, Keegan's the man to beat. Everyone knows it. He's showing up on Saturday not with a tactic of am I going to win, but by how much. The course record's on the line. He's made it very apparent. He's going for it. Swenson now on the home straight. He's got nothing but daylight. Give it up for your men's winner. What I think he is is the hardest worker and most talented at the same time. And when you put those two together, you get that sort of level. We're just not as good, and we have to figure that out if we want to try to con compete with them head to head. Keegan Swenson, your winner, and Lachlan Morton in third place. Lachlan Morton. Lockie is an interesting cat. You know, he's a, he's a fun guy. He's never won here. This is the race that he put a check mark on at the beginning of the season. He wants to win this race. Cole Patton is a name that really stands out to me. This is his step out season. That's my prediction. Cole really strikes this balance. He's not necessarily the five-star favorite, so he's gonna sit back. He's gonna let the race unfold in front of him. It's pretty surreal to think that uh, halfway through this race, top of Columbine, these riders are exactly halfway through the Grand Prix of 2023. And, uh, we decided it was time to up our game, so we've decided to change things up a little bit. It is Friday, August 11th, and we are about 400 feet above Leadville, gearing up for the Leadville 100 MTB. Hemo, great to be up here in the helicopter with you today. Yeah, Janelle, I'm uh, pretty honored to have the opportunity and had the good fortune of uh, being involved with the Leadville Race Series for oh, 16 or 18 years now. It's pretty amazing the way these events change people's lives by what they accomplish out here. All starting at 10,200 feet above sea level. Janelle, this mountain, this city, Everything that goes into allowing these events to be here and supporting these events to be here. We were talking search and rescue, the sheriff's department, the police department, the Office of Emergency Management. It goes on and on. Our city, our county government. I want to give it up for this town and for having us here and continuing to bring us here and support us to be here. So let's give it up for Leadville. Yesterday was all about getting the expo area set up with all the tents and, you know, for packet pickup, you know, helping out vendors, all that kind of stuff. This morning I've been in a meeting with the county around just making sure our medical is dialed all on course, making sure that our law enforcement is all set, that we have course marshals and law enforcement at all the key areas. And I'll be walking around just making sure that there's nothing out of place. You know, when we come for some big event like this, and we all can lose sight sometimes. And so I think there's this genuine appreciation that Leadville is a very different community. You know, we got six plus 14ers around us and you see it when you look out and it never gets old. Leadville is a very emotional race. You, you need to put all your mind, all your strength in your leg. And that's what I'm looking for, to have a lifetime experience. When you think about mountain biking in the United States and you've been around the scene, you think about Leadville. The winters are long and tough and the summers are short and the weather's wild. It's just brought out the, the toughest runners and riders to participate in these events. This is uh, my first high elevation mountain bike race. I've done a few other, you know, 100 mile races, but nothing like this. 
we all are going through the same goal. So yeah, we're all trying to push and motivate ourselves to do, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. Mountain biking in Leadville is synonymous to road riding through Italy and France. It's the pinnacle event to win. We start in downtown Leadville at 6th and Harrison. They roll down the boulevard and they hit dirt and immediately start climbing St. Kevin's. Climbing is the name of the game in this thing. There's 12,000 feet of gain. St. Kevin's out of the gate to Carter Summit where they'll bomb down into turquoise lake hitting speeds of 50 miles an hour and then right back on the climb up towards Sugarloaf and Hagerman Pass and then one of the toughest descents on the course, Powerline. It can get chunky and challenging and that's where we'll often see the strong and technical mountain bikers come out. After Powerline, they're moving forward through Pipeline, a lot of rolling terrain, two tracks, ATV trails, before ultimately making their way to Twin Lakes. It's kind of the biggest crew point on course. Thousands of people there supporting their riders, huge party zone, awesome environment, and then the riders are hitting the crux of the course, which is Columbine. It's a 3,000 foot climb, about seven miles long, averages 9%, 12,500 feet of elevation. The air is thin, the trail gets tight, it's the most technical climb on the course. Riders are just cracking and blowing up. And at that point, we really know how the race is unfolding. And then they turn around and do it all backwards. <laughs>
August always feels like late season to me. Wheels fall off, people start scrapping for last minute things. Riders who haven't had a good season start to panic and it's just, it's a different vibe. Finishing sixth in the, the Grand Prix field at Seattle, that was, you know, not so bad and, and maybe where I thought I, I might be um, in terms of expectation, but from there, it's, it hasn't, hasn't gone so well for me. Unbound, obviously there was a mechanical disaster there. Getting straight to altitude, I just basically trained myself into the ground. We got to Crusher and another throwaway. You toe the line with that killer instinct and the expectation that I'm going to leave all of myself out there. How about you? How's your ride? Yeah, it's good. Sweet, man. We went and wrote down. Power line. Power line. Power line. Yeah, it's the gnarliest part of the course. Yeah. The Lifetime Grand Prix doesn't wait for anyone. I feel the pressure for sure, and I think athletes are all coming from different angles to the Grand Prix. Some from other countries, and some just here trying to make it, you know, living in vans and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> You're fast. And being here nine weeks with my wife and daughter back home, so that was tough. I don't know if you're a parent, maybe you can relate. And like, it's, yeah, it was quite, quite. Surreal meeting them at the airport. Miracle. Oh my god. Miracle. It really was hard. I found it, um, yeah, probably harder than perhaps I was expecting, you know. Like, um, I guess if the racing was going really well, maybe it was, maybe it would be easier, but like, I was just sort of getting nothing back. It just changed my mindset a bit, you know. I had that distraction of them uh, and the enjoyment of showing them where I've been and, and what I've been up to. and. Um, yeah, to be honest, that's not like anything I've experienced before. Uh, got four events to go on the Grand Prix and, um, yeah, my heart's set on, on, you know, getting back up the standings where I, where I think I should be, so. So we got to Boulder a week ago where both my wife and I grew up. So we kind of used the Leadville steamboat race block as like a family reunion excuse. It's been, it's been pretty full gas, but it's also been a lot of fun. Um, it's been hard to be a serious bike racer, but yeah. that's all right. Okay, there they are. My Grand Prix this season has been a story of disciplines. I have royally underperformed on the mountain bike and I've been podium contention or fighting for the win in all the drop bar races. Yeah. Crusher, you know, that's kind of back in my bread and butter. World tour climber. You want some cheese? Long climbs, just go up mountains quick. So I got dedicated again and uh, kind of got my old world tour legs back and things were really clicking and uh, all of a sudden push came to shove and it was just Keegan and I on top of the first climb. We had this gap, solidify it, and then the final climb was gonna decide it. Unfortunately, I dropped my chain right as the descent started. Took back 90 seconds and then the lights went out. It was a good ride. Not gonna say I would have beat him on the day, but I would have really enjoyed, you know, going blow to blow with him on the final goal to crush. Picture the races, this morphing, changing thing. The race is your river. It's ever changing. The riders are all these drops of water. So it's not like I'm playing off a single guy. I mean, of course, you have to beat Keegan to win the race. But each one is this small part that makes up this bigger thing. What is driving those riders? I love all parts of it. For me, it's just about finding that internal harmony and apply myself to all the parts that make gravel this cool, unique thing.
Well, and I mean, this shit is really like one line. Yeah. My God, it's terrifying. I was up here like two weeks ago and we were riding around. I was like, hey, hold my beer. I know how to ride power line. Yeah. And just sent it. And like, there's that bit in the middle that's like real. And dude came off the line and was literally just like oh Netflix God. scrolling. Like, I was like, yeah. I can't see the trail. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same thing as you did. I got here and I was like, let's go check out power line, like old time's sake. And same thing, drop in, you're like, yeah, let's rip. And then it got down and I was just like, is this the hard tail? Like, yeah. is it this that much more scary on the hard tail? And then I took the full sus out there the next day and I was just like, nah, it's just, just bumpy. <laughs> I've been lucky and like, I've been able to transition out of road racing into racing more off-road and gravel and mountain bike. And now um, all the races I do, I get to choose essentially. I was trying to find a, an alternative to the Ritchie stem, but honestly, I think the whole apparatus has a bit of a 90s flair, which I think is yeah. appropriate with the Ritchie stem. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right. I'm here because I want to be, and I don't have to be here. It's because I've chosen to be here, and that changes everything. There's no external pressure. It's a good feeling, you know, it's like you're alive because you're like, all right, I'm here to compete, like, let's get on with it. It's like, it's like a game really, isn't it? <laughs> it's not like a real job. <laughs> That's the way I approach it now. You don't want to do this anymore, you don't do it anymore. And if I felt like I used to feel racing on the start line here, I wouldn't show up, you know. One Leadville last year in a time of six hours and one second. Keegan is, I think it's safe to say, gunning for the course record today. All right, riders, this is it. The stage is cycling. Leadville Trail 100. Get into those corrals and get ready for a long day in the saddle and good luck. Good morning, everybody. We are super stoked. We got a great day on tap for you. Letville, Letville, Letville. We'll see you at the finish, family. Love ya. Give me a five count, spectators. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one. The record is at 558.35. Anytime you can gain time on a course, it is essential when you're going for the course record and you look at the athletes who have been racing Leadville for the past 29 years, there's never been a lack of talent. It's also anytime you can save energy. In a race like Leadville, they want to keep as much as they can in the reserves when they get back to that power line climb at the end of the day. But we're only about five minutes into today's race and we've seen one rider on the front setting pace as the riders head out of town. That is Tobin Ortblad of the Hit Squad. There are privateers and then the factory teams. Keegan's Hit Squad team and you have the Specialized team. And they have good riders under the same jersey with sometimes team directives on who to help when. The record is set back in 2015 by Albert Licata, went 558.35 and uh, yet to be broken. I want to win this race again. I yeah. wanted the last two years, so to you know come back and do a three P would be pretty cool. And then you know the record's a big deal. I came up a bit short last year, and it's kind of haunting me all year. This isn't road racing. This is mountain bike racing. What do you make of the fact that Tobin is setting pace right now? Keegan's really dissected the course. The beginning section is a place where there's minutes to be made up. I think we're starting to see more and more road race tactics coming into mountain biking and gravel. Keegan has some splits that he needs to hit to set the pace he needs to set to beat the record, and I am going to lead him out. He asked me, is there anything I can do to like help make sure you get the record at Leadville? I was like, you just drill the start and just string it out and just rip, and hopefully that's worth a couple of minutes. 
Like, Tobin, we're just gonna need you to sit on the front, go as hard as you can for an hour, and then you got five and a half more hours to go. <laughs> When you have a teammate willing to, let's just say it, sacrifice his results, that's pretty big in this sport. You know, it pays to have uh, have someone to help you. And, and I think we will see more and more kind of team dynamics, you know, people getting together and helping each other out in these races. We are with our lead men as they take the left-hand turn onto the meaty part of the Sugarloaf climb. It looks like we have a group of about 25, 30 riders on the front. Keegan Swenson followed closely by Lachlan Morton. It looks like Russell Finsterwald on his wheel. A little gap to John Gaston. Keegan doesn't like to just beat a record. Like he doesn't want to beat it by two seconds. I think Keegan wants to beat it by minutes. And I think he has a pretty bold pacing strategy. I think he's, he's almost more hungry for the record than he is like actually winning the race. So there's the chance he blows himself up. He looks super comfortable. You know, getting a little bit of gap up here on the top of Sugarloaf, he could probably be a little bit more conservative when he heads down power line. That's the spot that really can ruin people's day because it's so hard on the tires. I have my own strategy in terms of pacing. Like, of course, I'll contribute to the front group, but I'm not gonna overexert myself out there just to help Keegan get the record. Lachlan Morton in fourth, Keegan in second wheel, Russell Finsterwald in the lead. You'll see this, the speed pick up, it'll start to drop off and they're gonna hit the infamous power line descent. I think it's kind of a ride or die effort because if it's gonna be a hard pace all day, if a gap opens up, you're not gonna be able to close that gap down if there's a motivated group moving down the roads. You know, Lachlan knows from last year, came over in the lead group, flatted, you know, came off the bottom of power line, I don't know, probably at 30th, had to chase all day. Keegan does get away, just don't give up. It's bike racing, anything can happen. Oh, this looks like we have a mechanical. Russell fits the wall. Howard Gods just gave up a look. This is not good. Going to have to handle this quickly. Lexi, it looks like just went by. Alex Howes. Let's go, guys. Let's go. And we, oh, we've got Russell like back got a, up and going. Got a quick hit of air there, and looks like he's back on his bike. Let's hope that holds for him. I don't know. I don't like to race for second, so I'll just give it everything until the end. And we're looking at 10 riders in our lead group. Howard Grotz, Braden Lang, Zach Colton, Lachlan Morton, Casey McElvin, Cole Patton, who's been having a fantastic season. Spent a lot of time over the last few weeks training on this course. I think that he could have a very strong result today. Tied for fifth in the Grand Prix. He's having a good year. I think that as a competitor, obviously, unless you're winning, you're never quite satisfied. You know, Pipeline's kind of a long, uh, rollery, flat section. It's first aid station on the day, so some of them probably took a feed. You can see Lachlan Morton moving up there on the left. Of all the races, like, Leadville's always one that sparks me up a bit more, I think. Normally holds his cards pretty close to the vest, but he has put in a lot of time and energy. You know, it's kind of hooked under the skin that until I, like, get out the ride I have in my head here, then I'll probably have to keep coming back. You know, where professional cycling is in North America, all these riders are having to up their game. We're seeing just smoke in time. These are record-setting paces right now that they're on. The most frustrating thing is like making so much progress, way higher power numbers, way more experience, but so does everyone else. Everyone else is stepping it up too. It's just kind of a never-ending battle. It's a proper competition, this, and you need to be like showing up with the A game, otherwise you're not going to be at the front. So we just saw our leaders pass through. We had a big group of about 15 riders. 
They're working really well together. Everything's strung out, single file. We didn't expect to see a group quite this big going into the base of Columbine. So expecting fireworks to go off as they hit up 12,500 feet. All the race favorites were there. We saw Keegan Swenson leading us through. Lachlan Morton looking super comfortable. Ryan Standish was also in that group. Peter Vakic, Payson McGelvin. We saw Braden Lang in there having a great ride. All right, the second group led by Andrew Lesperance, Kyle Trudeau in there. Russell Finsterwald did not make the initial separation. Surprised to see Russell in this second group. And Pete Stetna hanging on the back of that group as well. So two big pre-race favorites, Russell Finsterwald and Pete Stetna did not make the initial separation. We're gonna see how things blow up here on Columbine. We're gonna catch them when they pass back through. Keegan, as a person, super great guy. He's always been super supportive of me. But as a competitor, it can be just so frustrating. Just like, okay, who's the best of the rest? We're up to the infamous Columbine climb here. This thing is a monster in the middle of the race. It's usually a game changer. About seven miles long from, from the bottom to the very top. They're gonna climb about 3,100 feet in just under seven miles. Just, it's amazing. You gotta just keep having belief and hope, but there's no denying that like, everyone's getting sick of being in Keegan's shadow. Now, when they went through the last timing mat at Twin Lakes, it was a group of about 15. If you want to win a race in North America right now, you need to beat Keegan. Keegan had attacked Alexi Vermeulen, followed. He hasn't flatted in years. He has crashed, but it hasn't been like detrimental crashes. It's impressive. Keegan is doing what he needs to do to maybe set a course record today. It's interesting. You know, we're seeing Keegan start doing his thing and, and running away with it. And I think a lot of people are wondering like, when's the luck gonna run out? Keegan is solo. He's looking for as much time as he can. Probably another five minutes, Keegan will break out into uh, what we call the go trail. So he's about to get to the good stuff. Been nothing but like impressed with him as much as I'd love to beat him. You know, I think if someone showed up and had better legs than him, he would own it. Um, but just no one showed up with better legs yet. So you can tell from the way he's riding how steep it is. You know what else is amazing? I, I'm guessing we're at 12, 14% right now. We got word Keegan was riding a 42 front ring. And look at the cadence he's putting out on this thing. There's only so many athletes in the world that can do that kind of power at that altitude. That's a big thing that Keegan's really excelled at is power at altitude. He doesn't lose as much power as most people do. Keegan looks like he's running away with his fourth of four victories. I mean, is he even touchable this season? At the top of the Columbine mine, 12,500 feet, air's razor thin, Egan is riding like it's sea level. So we've just come on a group of chasers, Alexi Vermeulen in front of this group, Cole Patton in second wheel, Howard Grotz in third wheel. About to hit the turnaround, he must have put four or five minutes on them on this climb. Look at this, ugh. Boy, he is just putting on a clinic today. Should be game on for the descent. Racing is his focus in life. He doesn't have any like these side hustles where he's doing podcasts and doing meet and greets at the venue all the time. He's here to race and that's pure and simple, that's it. Looks like he just passed Howard Grotz, Lexi Vermeulen and John Gaston. The tide has totally turned for the riders who are in pursuit. Keegan Swenson well on her way to a sub six, probably a course record. I just clocked him at 46 miles an hour. Call. 
when we came out of Twin Lakes, Keegan Swenson had a lead of eight minutes on this group of six. So John Gaston, that Colt, Howard Gratz, Alexi Vermeulen, and Cole Patton just behind. I knew before the series that Keegan was going to be the guy to beat. And there was a lot of people talking about like, ah, oh, like, how they're going to do in gravel and whatever. And I was like, I saw that guy roll, like, he'll be fine. Following Lachlan Morton and Peter Vakoc. I think Lachlan was somewhere in the top uh, 10 coming off of Columbine. So they may be chasing back a little bit here, but they look to be in good shape. We raced Cape Epic together earlier this year, and that was like another good insight into his process. We sat around for like a week in the backyard just fiddling with bikes, man. <laughs> I'd, never, I'd never thought that much about bikes in my life. He's got like three different sets of tyres he's trying, <laughs> like he's doing all kinds of stuff that no one else is doing. There's no luck involved. Like there's not a piece of equipment on his bike that he doesn't test and think and then test the alternative. I mean, there's a reason he doesn't flat. We're back at the pipeline aid station and uh, Keegan's just come in leading. We think but he's got somewhere between an eight and nine minute lead. If he can hold that eight minutes, it's gonna be hard for these guys to catch him when he gets back to that power line climb. He is very methodical, nerding out about different things to make racing more efficient, really. He knows when to take risks and when not to take risks. But I think the main thing is, I think, his work ethic. Keegan's one of the guys who probably works the hardest in the field. He lives it, you know, he thinks about it. He prepares in a way that is very professional. He's on the pavement and about to turn into power line. By my calculations right now, he's about six minutes ahead of last year's pace coming into the bottom of power line. He's a regular guy, you know? Like, loves his motorbikes, loves trucks. He's, he's just, uh, you know, a guy out there, like, living his best life, I think. You get the feeling that he's just doing something he he loves doing, you know, and that, that grind and that push, it's not hard for him because he's just, he's doing the one thing he actually really wants to do, you know. Well, the chase group just got to the bottom of power line. Zach Calton, Alexi Vermeulen, John Gaston, Howard Grotz, I think Cole Patton is still in there. 30 seconds down, I see Lachlan. Alexi Vermeulen had a phenomenal year last year. This year, he needs a win. I like him in a sprint. You know, we've got power line now, so we'll see what happens. I just got an update that they are 18 minutes down. It's kind of his to lose at this point. I don't want to ever offend anybody, but I'm just going to be blunt. Knowing that you'll never be as good as Keegan, is that a thought that you have? And is that deflating as a racer? I don't know that I want to know. And I'll also admit, I, I, bet you, I bet you I'm operating on 90% of my capacity with everything else that I do. So there's a belief that you can be as strong as him? Yeah. I think it's why I show up. I don't think, I, like I, I would struggle to show up if I, think I, if I didn't think I could beat him. And I think there's moments that I know, you know, that Keegan will, will be riding, you know, and he'll kind of simplify things and say, oh, you know, they don't train as much as us. And I'm like, dude, Keegan, we don't train the same amount. Like, you train way harder than I do. Nobody works harder than he does. Egan is almost back to Bay Queen on the pavement. We're gonna have to tell the folks on the side of the road to watch out because they're gonna think it's a motorcycle buzzing by him. And uh, look at him, I mean, he stood up and he is just hammering. There's definitely moments like where you cross the finish line, you're so incredibly stoked on doing something you didn't think you were gonna do. And you're like, he did what? He went how fast? And you're like, dude, I saw him like three hours ago. What happened? He might be as much as 20 minutes ahead right now, and he is just flat out flying. He is on course to crush the record. But I think that's the goal. We need a Keegan. We all knew that he wanted to come in here and knock down the record. There are all these rumors about him potentially having someone help him, helping him, you know, work for him and whatnot. He has absolutely crushed it. To me, right now, Keegan represents the best of us. 
when you go over to Europe and you want to race with a team or you want to grow the sport, he's the person that I hope people aspire to. Just to watch the way that he's carrying the speed, the efficiency is a beautiful thing. It's just so impressive. He is so deserving of this performance. But it's always a chance. Coming down 6th Street into Leadville, Keegan looking at a win here today at the Stages Cycling Leadville Trail 100 mountain bike. We're talking a stellar day here for Keegan in, in Leadville. He wants to set a record no one will ever beat. But Keegan's dominance to me is fun and exciting. I wouldn't say it's demoralizing at all. And I think he just did it. Wow, Keegan Swenson, your 2023 Stages Cycling Leadville Trail 100 MTB champion. What a champion. We're looking at probably around a 14 minute course shattering record. How are you feeling about that? Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Last year I came up just so short of the record, and this year I was, you know, I was like, just went all in and. You know, if I blew up at the end, I blew up, and I was, <laughs> I was going to send it, and I didn't want to just get the record by a few seconds. I wanted to, you know, make it mine. Keegan started this build in 2018 to who he is now. And it's like, it's just been cool to be along for the ride. I mean, I spent a lot of time, like, just dialing in this bike, and I think I made the perfect bike for this race. I had a pacing plan, I had a fueling plan. All that was left was for me to not suck and get it done, so, uh, yeah and then to take what we're doing in the Grand Prix over to Europe and race worlds, like to see it all come together. The reason I ride a bike. Well, way to go, man, Keegan Swenson. All right, Josh, second and third place. Who are we looking at? Now, the last report we gave everybody, it was very close. Yeah, it was super close. Here, I'm gonna shift gears and go back over to our overall. I've been a part of bike racing my entire life, practically. And I felt like I've always been chasing something. I've always been chasing this feeling of truly loving your job and finding that place where it all connects. So this is it. Alexi Vermeulen and John Gaston are right now duking it out for second and third. And for the first time, like American Gravel's done that. It's the place to be. Alexi and, and John have been two and three minutes here on Cole, and then Cole's probably got about a minute on Howie. We're setting a precedent for what it is to be a professional gravel racer. Whether it's Lifetime Grand Prix or anything else, it's just so inspiring to be a part of. We knew Lexi had the, had the ability, he just was, you know, he's off to a slow start this year, but look at him now, and he's gonna, this is really gonna move him up in the placings of the Grand Prix. Like, do I get sick of going to Emporia? Like, are the races hard? Yeah. But it's just, it's, it's a feeling I can't explain, and I'll like, I'll tell my dying day, tell everyone to apply. Crest in the hill, so they're gonna pick up speed. You know, we may see someone kind of try to take off here. John looking over his left shoulder. Alexi sitting back on the wheel. Somebody is going to have to make a move. There goes Alexi. John trying to hold on, but he oh, just sure doesn't gap. have it. All the way to the end. There he goes, opening up that lead. Grounding it out to the red carpet, and what a finish for second place. Oh, uh, congratulations to both Alexi and John for a fantastic day at Leadville. I have never been so excited and so dismayed on a result. Like, Keegan is a hell of a racer. It is not fun to finish 25 minutes behind somebody. Could Keegan have set the record without Tobin at Leadville? 100%. Did Tobin absolutely set the tone for the fastest Leadville start ever in history? Holy shit. It's been cool just like workshopping races together and talking about how the end might play out and then seeing him execute it every race. Tobin's one of the best teammates I could ask for, you know, always like down to sacrifice himself. So, um, you know, hopefully I can repay the favor someday. That was the most impressive display of anything. I don't care winning 14 races out of the year, like I.
That will never be repeated, in my opinion, Good ever. Answer. I also don't think it's going to continue all the time. The cracks in the armor are coming. There's Marathon World Championships, there's Gravel World Championships, there's other events that, you know, as this sport grows in the U.S., are going to be interesting to him. You go and win Leadville twice, what, are you gonna, was he going to go sub 540? I think he's always going to want to try to win the Grand Prix, and he can probably do it without as much focus as he's put on it. Yeah. That's scary. But I think there's going to become moments where people realize that, you know, Keegan's dominant, but he's not unbeatable. It has been a Leadville for the history books. Keegan is no longer content to just take first. He's going for shattering records along the way. It's good to see the legendary Lachlan Morton on top of the leaderboards, but even now the points are close and we still have three very different races left.